Yeah, first off, I want to give uh, a lot of credit to Elon. I think Coach Shragi, um does a great job. I'm very impressed with their team and um, just his uh, their, the stuff that they run offensively and defensively. I think they're going to be a really good team in their league. And um, I'm a <clears throat> big fan of, of Coach Rocky and, and what they're doing there. Uh, secondly, really proud of our guys' defensive effort. I thought we really guarded at a high level. That's who we are, what we do, what we're about. And, um, you know, we had to really guard at a high level against a team that came in fifth in the country in three-point shooting. So uh, really proud of our defensive intensity. Uh, and... Um, and that's who we've been, and that's what we're about, like I, like I said. And we really executed and followed the game plan. Uh, you're looking at a guy like Bubba Parm and Asante Price combined with 16 rebounds between the two. Uh, those are winning type of plays, effort. Uh, I'm really proud of those guys to do that. Uh, <clears throat> I thought Khalid Moore was a stat sheet stuffer. And, um, you know, Jose had sprained his ankle on Friday's practice. Uh, Michael DeVoe was throwing an alley-oop to Khalid Moore. Jose was in front of Khalid, and Khalid pushed off and stepped on Jose's foot, and it turned. So uh, hopefully they'll be back for, for next week, but we're just taking a day at a time. And uh, James, who I thought was a little rusty just because of the fact he was out with the flu for a few days and uh, he had to just catch his wind uh, up and down a little bit. But other than that, uh, you know, we got to be better on taking care of the ball. I mean, that's been just a thing of ours. In all of our exhibition games, in our two games, we just turned it over at just such a high clip. We've got to be better about that. I love that we got to the free throw line, um, uh, but we've just got to be better at, at taking care of the ball. But once again, our defense is who we are, what we're about, and it held true today as well. Price is a, is a kid that, you know, no, not much fanfare when he came here. Uh, and I guess he's, he's worked his way to the point where you feel comfortable with him out there and, and the way he hustles and gets on the boards. Yeah, Asante's, you know, he was a, wasn't a highly ranked recruit at all. Uh, I think we did a good job on the evaluating of him. And um, he's going to be a, look, he's known to be a really good shooter and he hasn't shot the ball well, but he's, he's a very good defender. And he comes up with some other things like on the glass, uh, makes other winning plays. Uh, and he just, he really should only be a senior in high school. He just turned 18 just recently. so. Um, he should be a senior in high school, so um, <clears throat> he's a young freshman, but he's going to continue to be good. And once he's, it's the same thing with Bubba. They just need to get hot a game on their three-point shots, just to kind of get off that, um, you know, kind of get off that that, uh, that that stuck where they're stuck right now, just with their shooting. And the Santi made one late, but and Bubba made one late, but those two just make a couple shots. Things can just change, change from because they're both very good shooters, and but both are being asked to do things. <laughs> defensively, 50-50 balls, diving on the floor, running a team, running this, running that, doing this, doing that. And so, uh, you know, that's where the understanding of the, you know, being able to not just focus on offense and being able to do all those type of things and then be able to score the ball. And that's why it's just going to take a little more time. And, and um, so but both guys, both Bubba and, and um, Asante have done a nice job with the rebounding. They've done a really nice job on the glass. Moses had another kind of strange game for you where he's maybe overly aggressive or emotional and yeah, some, he, after he gets that first whistle. Yeah, he, well, he, I didn't think, you know, he, 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 he's, we, again, another thing we got to get him in a rhythm. He was really good in the second half for NC State, Kelly. Um, and he was, just, and then he ended up fouling out, but he was really good in that second half. I just thought today, maybe not, he didn't get as much of a rhythm. I thought, I thought, his practices, he, he wasn't as sharp as we needed him to be, and it maybe affected a little bit of his rhythm going into the day as well, too. And that's why I'm always talking about how you practice is how you play that that rhythm on that, you know, the rhythm, flow, and energy. It's a direct correlation. So we we got to get him back in the flow of it as, as well, too, because uh, he's a very talented young man, and he just got to get his timing timing back. So um, And the good thing is we've got about a week or so before we play again, so we've got enough practices and hopefully opportunities to condition to continue to get our conditioning better to get that rhythm, flow, and energy and timing back for a guy like Moses. How much do you think of <coughs> trouble you had on offense was due to Jose not being in the line? Well, uh, I mean, uh, Jose's are, you know, it's, we're, we're a better team with Jose, um, and, um, and so I think just we had to get used to not having Jose out there. I thought Elon gets credit defensively. I thought they did a very nice job defensively. Um, so I want to give Elon full credit on that. But I, I, I did think it took us some time to adjust 
not having Jose. Um, and for Bubba just to continue to, to understand the point guard role and, and being able to run a team, and, um, and that's just all part of the growth process that we have. And, and, um, and you look at our schedule, you know, there just every game is going to be an intense game, every possession. So that's why all you know, as we keep, we just got to keep getting better. And I do believe as we keep moving forward in the, the season, we'll continue to get better. When, in what way did you feel lost the most? Do you think? Say again. In what way did you feel his absence the most? Well, I'm um, just probably the, the the flow of the offense. You know, just the, the flow of it, um, and um, it's just probably probably that. But we'll, we'll this will this was a good opportunity to get a guy like Bubba to get a really good growth and experience to continue to have him be better. On being able to run a team because I thought he did a really he he gave he gave us great minutes for NC State when I subbed him in when Jose, you know, got in foul trouble and we didn't miss a beat. So, but it's different now when you're starting the game and not coming in. You, you're not the guy coming with instant energy. You got to start the game with that. And so it, again, just adjusting and, and getting that feel of flow on that. When James got off to a slow start, Evan came in and really mixed it up and got on the board to give you a lift. I was really proud of Evan. I didn't think he played real well versus NC State. I thought it was a little slow. I thought today, we talked about today, he came with great energy. And he had, he had a pep in his step. And he, when he came with that pep in his step, it, it, you know, he's, he, his survivability on the basketball floor is all about energy. Energy, energy, the way you cut, the way you move, rhythm, flow. I mean, just that's who he is. And uh, when he plays with that type of motor, that pep, you know, that that extra speed in his first step, um, he's a good player. And so um, that was a big difference between this game and last game with him. But he, he gave us a great lift, really proud of Evan. You got pretty much everybody in except for Christian and I. Is that indicative yeah, of maybe Christian, you're looking? Well, Christian, we, we talk, you know, Christian is uh, uh, 20 years of age. He's going to, and, I, and I, I think Christian got a chance to be really good. Um, and we talked about the possibility of possibly redshirting. So I didn't want to burn a year. You know, playing a game, and if he's still debating, do I want to register or not? He's 20. I've told him when you were t in, in, when you were 22, because he turns in September 10th, so he'll be 21 next season. But his junior and season year, he'll be 22 and 23. I said just by your progression. I mean, he's a big boy now. I mean, he's six, seven, six, eight, legit, and he can really shoot it. He just, you know, the more he matures physically and he continues to get better. He's going to he's going to be really good when he's 22 or 23. I'm just telling you, he can be a guy that's that's a real dangerous weapon on the floor, all over the place, and um, and the plus, you know, for his personal best, I, I want him to do what's best for him, um, and then for our team, even him, it keeps us getting old. As I've said, getting old and staying old is the entire key for what we try to do with the program, or just have a better chance of success, and that allows us to do that. And so it's the best thing for Christian if he decides he wants to do that, and then it would be great for our team. However, if he doesn't want to redshirt, um, you know, I'm not going to force the young man to not do it. If he doesn't want to, then whatever he decides and makes that final decision, we'll go from there. Would one you like one. to see a rule like they have in college football where a kid, yeah. and you know, you can play four games or whatever, which is I, I love, whatever percentage? I would love for that rule to happen. Because you can play, they did, they, they, they did change it where you used to not be able to play in the exhibition games. Yeah. So they at least change it to that, but I would like for them college basketball to the same rule that football does. I think it's a really good rule, playing the first few games, and then if it's you know, or give us two or three more exhibition games, you know, have, give you know, give us more games. I like more games the better, <laughs> you know, more games the better. But yeah, I, I think it's a great rule that football has. I really do. With Christian, how how will that decision be made? Is there a point at which you? Well, it, probably by next Wednesday, we you know or. I don't know, maybe next Wednesday or the game after, but that probably just gives enough time after this next week to make a decision. Are you a little bummed out that you have a week off now? You don't like to have downtime between games and you know, no, kind of that? Um, well, a few things. We got to get better and uh, we got to keep improving. So this will give us time to, to get improved, you know, keep improving. But I don't mind downtime if we're 2 0. <laughs> can, I can, you know, it makes you sleep better at night. Sure. If you're not 2 0, then it's you want to play the next game. So, um, um, but uh, it's just kind of the way the schedule falls because we'll get ramped up in December with with the games the way it is. So, yeah. Anything else? You, you expect Jose to be ready for 
I, I hope so, yeah. I'm, he was he was in a boot Saturday and Sunday, but he was walking today and, and hopefully by Wednesday or, you know, we're off tomorrow, so hopefully by practice Wednesday or Thursday he's able to practice. I'm curious to ask Michael and James. It was interesting to me that as much trouble as you're having on offense in the year, that they were still playing really hard, and it can be the case that you kind of give up or let it down if you're having so much trouble. And I'm curious, did, did that come at all as a surprise to you, or is that kind of, I mean, it's no, I, Ken, I mean, uh, to our young men, I, I, I'm going to tell you something, this team, I'm just really proud of these guys. These, we got a great group of guys, and they play their tails off. I mean, do you see how hard they played against NC State? I mean, I mean, and NC State played so hard, too. That was a high-level game. But, and you were there. I mean, our team played so hard. And even tonight, I mean, they played so hard. And usually teams can have a letdown here and there. But what I'm proud of, and I really believe this, is, is you know, being older, Getting old and staying old allows you to understand that about how every possession is precious. And when you're when you have a younger group, they might not understand that, and then how every, and then you can't take a possession off. Just like I coach and, and live with every single possession, the players got to play like that. They got to feed my energy on that on every possession, and that's part of being an older team. They get that and they understand it. But I tell you, this is a tremendous group of young men. I'm so proud of them. They play so hard. And they they just they compete and they just play hard and hard and hard and they just play with great energy. So they get full credit. They're just a great group of guys.